Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. This video is first in a sequence of videos about what I call synthetic combos. Synthetic combos are combinations or sequences of reactions based on the chemistry of carbonyl compounds that allow us to, to quickly do complex transformations in just a couple of steps, sometimes even in, in one uh, reaction step. And the first one I want to talk to you about today is the malonic ester synthesis. And the structure I have up here actually is the structure of malonic acid, or 1,3-propane dioic acid. That most chemists refer to this as malonic acid. And the malonic ester synthesis starts from a derivative of malonic acid, like, I would say, diethylmalonate is really popular. And then through a sequence of synthetic steps, converts it into a carboxylic acid with a with a new substituent um, out here. So that's um, it's been described as using or as being used to make substituted acetic acids, but the reality is it's often uh, used to make substituted propanoic acids, and it will, as we walk through the, the process, you can see uh, exactly what that might be. Um, and, you know, and, you know, the reality is, is it, it's really quite straightforward. It's, it's a common undergraduate lab experiment sequence because of it, uh, and everything works out really quite well. So I'm going to show you the sequence of reactions here, and then we'll talk about the, the steps. Alright, All right, so the first thing that we need to do is treat diethylmalonate with a base, um, and we'll talk about base choice here in, in a moment, and then react it with some kind of appropriate alkyl halide. In our third step, we need to hydrolyze the ester and this can be done in, in acid or base to hydrolyze the ester. And four, the final step is a decarboxylation step. Uh, and it's a step four that's a reaction you probably haven't seen before, but it's an interesting reaction in that um, it's happening inside you right now. There are spontaneous decarboxylation of compounds with some, with some degree of structural similarity to, to what we're going to be looking at here, going on right now as you metabolize sugars to generate ATP uh, and keep your cells going. And so this sequence of events, again, leads us to this substituted acid. So let's talk about the steps. One thing I'm going to let you know is <clears throat> I teach this content after I have introduced all, almost all of the other carbonyl reactions, so I'm not going to draw a lot of mechanisms in this video. I'm assuming that um, if you want the mechanism for uh, acid or base hydrolysis, for example, you're going to go watch my video on that. So the first thing that we are going to do is deprotonate diethylmalonate. And so diethylmalonate uh, is a really interesting compound. These 1,3-dicarbonyl compounds are much more acidic than regular comp uh, carbonyl compounds. And, and the pKa of um, malonic acid is like 12.9 something. or 13, so let's just call it 13, by some references. And those two hydrogen atoms in there, in the middle, are really easy to remove, and you don't need to use a strong base. So if you've watched my video on the aldol reactions, you know that sometimes the, the pKa of a carbonyl compound can be in, in around 20 or higher. Uh, but the extra carbonyl group creates additional resonance stabilization. I'm not going to draw a lot here, but I will draw the, the three most important resonance contributors, maybe. 
There we go. And so, yeah. plus. Right, so there are additional uh, resonance stabilization and conjugation in this conjugate phase. Our second uh, step in this reaction is an SN2 alkylation. Now that we have this enolate anion, it can undergo alkylation like any enolate anion. I do not want the, the resonance arrow. Here we go. And here is one reason why I have been putting an extra CH2 in between um, my R group and my leaving group because this is an SN2 reaction. And I am going to. Oh. I'm going to try to draw this mechanism. fail at it. Alright, um, anyway, this is an SN2 reaction. I apologize that I'm having a little bit of trouble putting the arrows in here. This is an SN2 mechanism, which means that primary alkyl halides are going to react much better than secondary, and tertiary alkyl halides are going to have a lot of trouble. Right. And then we end up with a, a substituted diethylmalonate. third step we hi is hydrolysis of the two esters. And again, I'm not going to draw the mechanism of this step either. This is a reaction that I've covered uh, fairly extensively in other places. But just remember that you can hydrolyze this ester in either aqueous acid, so H3O+, plus, or aqueous base. So it's like sodium hydroxide in aqueous solution. And if you choose the base, then you know, you're going to need to um, neutralize the reaction to get the neutral acid out. Now the final step I'm going to draw the mechanism for, because this is a new reaction probably for some of you. decarboxylation. Now, something interesting can happen when you have this arrangement of a, two, a carboxylic acid and another carbonyl functional group two carbons away. And I'm redrawing the carboxylic, one of these carboxylic acids here to be suggestive of what's going to happen. And then, interestingly enough, this reaction is a pericyclic reaction. It has a cyclic transition state. And one product is carbon dioxide. And the other product initially is this enol of the carboxylic acid. And that enol is absolutely the less stable tautomer, and so it tautomerizes pretty rapidly back to the carboxylic acid. And for anybody who is, is um, an organic chemistry reaction nerd like me, uh, officially this transformation here is actually a retroene reaction, if you're into such things. Um, so anyway, here, are the, here is uh, the process, and I realize that my, uh, my picture there is covering the structure of the product, so I'll fix that. Um, but one of the things that I want uh, to go over with you before we end this video is going back up here to our deprotonation step. And let's talk before about uh, an issue that we talk about a lot, 
in organic chemistry, and that's the issue of base choice. I want to delete everything else here. I'll come back up here real quickly and talk about base choice. Right. And clearly, I have chosen uh, sodium ethoxide. Sodium ethoxide is uh, the conjugate base of ethanol. Right. And ethanol has a, a pKa around 16. So sodium hydroxide should be a strong enough base to deprotonate diethylmalonate. The real question is, why didn't I use some other base like sodium hydroxide? And maybe you uh, can figure this out as you're watching, but we don't use sodium hydroxide because something else can happen with sodium hydroxide. I'm not promising that it's going to be the major uh, event that's going to happen, but once it happens, this whole process is done. Because right? remember that sodium hydroxide is a reagent that can react as a nucleophile. with esters and hydrolyze those esters to the carboxylate anion. And so once we get here, this is this is a bad place and we don't and the the synthesis doesn't proceed any further. It's not going to be possible to deprotonate the hydrogens in between here. It's already a dianion. It's it's um it's pretty done. Okay. So when we think about base choice for the uh, malonic ester synthesis, we want to match the alkoxide base to the alkoxy group in the ester. We do the same thing when we uh, pick a base to do the um, to do the Claisen condensation. So there's more of this discussion in the video on the Claisen condensation. But if we were working with this ester, which has methyl groups, and it's a methoxy ester, then you would choose sodium methoxide as our base to deprotonate uh, diethylmalate. Before I finish up the video, I just want to go through one additional thing. Uh, let's start actually with diethylmalonate here, or dimethylmalonate. And I'm going to give you some specific reagent. And it's going to um, give me a little bit of hassle here, so I apologize for that. I would like you to figure out, if you can, what is the product of this sequence, uh, which I'm going to have to move to just all be below the arrow, so there's room for it. Okay. What is the product of this sequence? And if you need to, pause the video, because uh, I'm going to move on. So if you pause the video, hopefully you've had a chance to, to work it out. And if not, that's okay. I will work through it together here. So after step one, sodium methoxide deprotonates here in the middle. And then that, this dimethylmalonate anion can be a nucleophile and react with bromomethane. So we have a methyl group here. But what's interesting is we still have a second hydrogen atom here that is acidic enough to be deprotonated by another equivalent of sodium methoxide. Yeah, anion in here, right? And so that means that we can do a second alkylation, in this case with... Um, I have a mistake in my structure. So if you went through and figured out that um, my 
that my second alkyl halide was invalid. Kudos to you. And if you've muddled your way through, that's fine too. I apologize. It was missing a, a carbon atom, and I apologize. Move the methyl group. So I had intended that to be isobutyl bromide, and uh, that that didn't happen the way I wanted it to. Um, and so whatever you came up with, there, but we got a second alkyl group. We can hydrolyze the ester. And um, one of the things that's interesting, actually, a lot of people who do the acidic hydrolysis, or acidic hydrolysis of, of esters, sometimes requires heat. And so they do the, the hydrolysis and the decarboxylation step at the same time, in the same vessel, I guess, is, is the appropriate way to do it, way to phrase it. And we get our carboxylic acid product. And I'm going to, to redraw a lot of this so that it's not quite so messy. So here's my isobutyl group, methyl group. And here we go. Again, my, my, my picture is covering part of the structure, so here we go. Right. So you can do double alkylations to get more complex carboxylic acids by using a, a second deprotonation step in this synthesis. Okay. Um, the malonic ester synthesis is closely related to the acetoacetic ester synthesis, which is going to be the next video uh, in this series if you're watching this as a playlist. Um, and if not, go search that out and we'll do some very similar synthetic sequence in the next video. Thank you for watching.